Well hello again and welcome to another walk. Today I've come to the village of Simmonsbury. Just about 10 minutes drive away from Athona, from Community House, the other side of Bridport. But it's a place that's come to take on a rather special significance for me over the last uh, couple of years. When I first came to Dorset 25 years ago, moved down here, I thought I had no connection really with the county at all. But a couple of years back, it came to light that my great-great-grandfather lived and died in this house here. And it's from this house that his son, my great-grandfather, left to join the Coast Guards, having married a young woman from Bridport, and travelled round, posted to different parts of the coast of, the, of uh, England and Ireland. And in one of those postings, his daughter met the son of the local publican, married, and they were my maternal grandparents. And then, shortly after discovering those facts, by pure chance, I met at Athona over a cream tea, a 90 year old man who remembered being brought up in the house I've just shown you and being shown the room where my great grandfather Fry, that was the family name, spent his last years in some considerable pain sadly from the condition which eventually killed him. So, some rather special connections here with my Fry and says there's plenty of fries still in Dorset, one of the best uh, known local building firms, for instance, CB Fry. Don't know whether I've got any connection with them, but maybe. So, a rather personal touch to this particular walk, and uh, it takes us up along this lane, and then shortly we'll be down into the village of Simmonsbury. So, I'll see you there. Right, in the village now, pausing for a moment by the Ilchester Arms pub. The Ilchester Estates at one time owned much of the land around Simmonsbury. And uh, you can come here at New Year and watch local people performing the traditional mummers play out in the car park at the back of the pub. It's uh, great fun. Walking up through the village, there's a school, which was part of which was uh, rebuilt not so long ago in my time here. And beyond that, you can just see the church tower. Simmonsbury means the place of somebody called Sigismund, and the village was in existence at the time of the Doomsday Book. So this is. Quite an old part of Dorset. Here's the school. And you may spot between the windows there a little dark dot on the wall. When this school was built, they built in tiny um, bird boxes within the walls so that birds can nest there for the children to see. The old rectory on our left. This is one of those places that reminds you what life was like for clergy in years gone by. It's a massive house, absolutely colossal, and apparently the rector of Simmonsbury at one time used to keep his own pack of hounds to hunt with, so you can gather what his lifestyle was. Very different since then. Latterly, the Church of England built this much more modest house as a rectory and then decided even that wasn't needed and I think it's a, a private residence now. But coming up here, coming up Shoot, Shoot Lane, S-H-U-T-E, and on the left, Shoot's farmhouse. And this building we know 
was built from oaks cut down in the year 1449. And that plank door is original. When my great grandfather lived in the village, he was a carpenter and probably would have made the coffins as well. But he didn't make that plank door, <laughs> not in the 15th century. Now coming up this lane, we very soon leave behind the village and we're on an ancient route which led originally towards the shrine of St. Witta at Whitchurch Canonicorum. We'll be re-meeting this lane later on, but for the moment we turn off to the left to visit a real local landmark. It's only about half past nine on a Sunday morning. Not too many people around yet. One or two walkers and runners. But uh, having, well, having been across the field for a couple of minutes, let me give you a preview of where I'm heading to at the moment. That doesn't look much at the moment from this angle, but that's the top of Colmer's Hill, which has become a bit of a local icon, regarded almost as the trademark of the Bridport area. I'll be up there in a few minutes' time. I'll take you with me, OK? Plenty of mole hills on this upward path and just very occasionally, if you keep your eyes peeled, you're lucky enough to see a mole hill under construction. I was walking the other day and had that privilege and managed to catch a little bit of it, just a few seconds on video. So although I can't see the mole active this morning, I'm going to cut a tiny bit of that into this video uh, right at this point, if I can manage it technically. But otherwise, carrying on up the hill towards the top. There you are, I hope you could see the earth just moving a little bit of it as previously unexposed earth is pushed to the top of the heap. Um, the way to spot the chance of seeing it happen is when you see a whole rash of molehills, if one of them is clearly much fresher, the earth much less dried off by the air and the wind and the sun than the rest, that might be the one that's active. It's worth sometimes pausing to have a look. Now, I was, I stopped to get my breath back because I've just come up this, the steepest side of Colmer's Hill, there it is. Looking back towards the sea, you're looking at Ypres Down, where we went on an earlier walk, my Bluebell adventure. And I'm going to just try a bit of a 360 degree panorama while moving also up to the very top of this hill. There's Bridport and Athona beyond it and the coast right round to Portland. Avoid this little tree there. They've planted some new trees up here because the few old ones are coming towards the end of their lives. Everyone seems to believe that there are three trees on the top of this hill. There have always been quite a lot more than three. But I think there's something in our cultural memory, probably connecting even to the three crosses on Calvary, that says an iconic hill has three trees, if you can't be bothered exactly to count. I'm looking now to northwards, towards Lewisden Hill. And there's, between those two trees, Pilsden Pen, the highest point in Dorset. And coming on round. See again the young trees and the trunks of the older ones. And I'm looking across towards West Dorset and the direction I'm going to be heading in a moment. 
So, down we go. Just pausing part way down, you can spot the path ahead leading up to the corner of a field. That's where we're going to go. Over to the right, that's where there used to be a deer park in centuries gone by, an area where deer were raised specially for hunting. And I realised I didn't complete my 360 degree panorama earlier on. Missed out Quar Hill. Quar as in quarry without the Y. On the whole of the top of that hill you can see if you go up there is uh, used to be open cast mining for stone and that stone would have been taken down into the village of Chiddock beyond where it built among other things Chiddock Castle. Long gone now. The remains of Chiddock Castle accessible by going up a small lane called Ruins Lane. Can't help wondering how often some of my forefathers might have climbed this hill and then walked down. Paused again on the way down. How quickly one season gives way to another. This hill would have had loads of bluebells just a few weeks ago. Now it's got bracken growing up and a lot of lovely foxgloves like this one. But look at the hillside ahead. All those bushes with white blossom. That's all elderflower. There's a lot of lovely elderflower cordial to be made there. Anybody got the, uh, the water and the sugar and the lemons ready? Mmm. Can't wait. Here we are at that gate in the corner of the field and looking back at Colmer's Hill. Named after a Reverend Colmer from the early 19th century. But uh, been there a lot longer than that. Now, I'm turning to take you just up to the very ridge, the col, we'd call it if we were in France. Went, went out on my bike yesterday. Made me rather long for biking holidays in France, but actually it was lovely here in Dorset. Now, this kind of beautifully shaded lane features, and in fact this very part of the country features in one of the great 20th century British thrillers published in 1939, Rogue Mail. I don't know if you've read it, maybe heard it's often repeated a reading of it on uh, Radio 4 Extra. And it all happens, well, no, the important bit of the tale happens right in this valley we're going to look into now, and particularly in shady hidden lanes such as the one we've just walked. This is the valley with North Chiddock below us, and we can't quite see the main village of Chiddock. It's over there, and we can just glimpse the sea. If you ever get a chance to read Rogue Mail, do. And now I'm turning round. If we headed down towards Chiddock, we'd be going down the wonderfully named Hell Lane. Now, Hell in Old Middle English meant bright. It doesn't necessarily mean hellish. Um, though actually as a lane if you were trying to walk it, let alone take a cart down it at times, <laughs> I think both meanings would be relevant. It's a bit shady but perhaps you can see the beginning of the nature of Hell Lane. Yeah, a magical spot but we're not going down there today. We're going to turn round and head back towards Simmonsbury. Now, why are these lanes built so deep and so shady? Well, they're not deliberately built that way. That's how they've evolved over many, many centuries of use by people and by animals. You can imagine pack horses and carts and so on coming up and down these lanes and chute lane then becoming hell lane was one of the pilgrimage routes I mentioned at the beginning of the walk 
to Whitchurch Canonic Corum and the Shrine of St Witta. It's one of only two shrines in the whole of England that have survived all the centuries and the various times when Christians of different sorts found excuses to tear each other apart because of religion or politics or economics. Two shrines survived without being destroyed and the relics removed and one of them is at Whitchurch Canon Decorum where we're told St Witter's bones are still there. Exactly who she was is a bit of a mystery. But at one time in the Middle Ages we're told that that shrine was second only to Thomas a Becket's memorial at Canterbury in terms of popularity as a pilgrimage route. So many a person may have trodden this rather steep and rocky path. I'm sorry if uh, the camera's bumping a bit. On their way to and from a visit to St Witta and the chance particularly to pray for healing there. Now you may notice that the lane is getting deeper. Look at the roots of that tree <laughs> overhanging. What's a Holloway? Well this is a Holloway. Holloway isn't just a former women's prison in North London. A road, a way that has hollowed out over the centuries. And this is one of the most dramatic examples I know of. Our part of Dorset is really blessed with Holloways. And they happen where feet and hooves and also water when it rains have worn away the track down and down into the surrounding strata. I believe this stratum is known as green sand, but basically it's some form of sandstone you need, uh, a fairly uh, friable crumbly stone in order to have a hollow way like this develop. And as it develops, of course, it becomes quite a little mini ecosystem. See lots of ferns growing in a place like this. And people take the opportunity, because it's soft stone, also to leave their own marks in it. We're just coming to the deepest, most gorgeous part of this Holloway. I think that'll be a suitable point on which to end this walk. The path continues on down back into the village of Simmonsbury. But I'm going to leave it here wondering if somewhere on these sandstone walls at one time might have been the name the initials of one of my ancestors. Someone's even put a face. <laughs>